video is sponsored by Fiverr, connecting you with the freelancers you need to help build your brand, including logo designers, copywriters, website developers, and more. Click the link in the description to check out my curated store for my recent recommendations of Fiverr sellers. What is up people, Dunna here, and today we're gonna be taking a look at editing some landscape photos inside Adobe Lightroom, and specifically using the range mask. Now a little warning, the pictures we're about to take a look at have snow in them and they will remind you of winter. So if you're not over fall yet, and if this is going to be triggering for you, I will leave a link to another video up there that you can go check out that's all about fall. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's hop into Lightroom. And the first thing that we'll see is that I have two photos here. I've got one that is looking straight out over Lake Louise with some of the rocks in the foreground. And then the other one that I have is actually looking at the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise sign with a mountain in the background. Last week, I posted both of these photos on my Instagram. So if you're not following me over there and you like these photos, make sure to head over and give me a follow. Now, what I wanna talk about today isn't necessarily every step of the way in editing this photo, but it's one specific thing that I like to use to take it over the finish line. This is what the photo looked like with just a basic edit on it using all of the tabs that I have over on the side. But what you can do beyond that are using these specific tools up in the top right here. Now we've got a brush tool, which means that we can brush in specific areas and do things to it. So for example, I can crank the exposure and then draw in the spots specifically where I want to crank the exposure or I can use a radial filter, which draws a circle. This is handy for doing very specific vignettes if you want to. So if I wanna crank down and just specifically highlight one spot, or I can use what's called a graduated filter. And what that does is as I drag it down, it creates a slope between when it's affecting the most and when it's affecting the least. So right now you can see that the top up here, it's making it a lot more Right now it's dehazed, which is bringing out a lot of that blue. And then near the bottom, it's not doing anything. And one of the things that you wanna know about these three tools is if you hit O, it will show you in red what it's affecting and how much it's affecting. Now you can see on the screen here that at the top, it's fully red. At the bottom, it starts to fade the red out. So it's gradually making less of that effect throughout the picture. This can be really handy for photos where at the horizon line, things get a lot brighter. You can use graduated filters to specifically make the sky a little bit darker so that it's not so contrasty against whatever's going on on the ground and a whole bunch of other situations. So again, hitting O shows us what we're affecting and that works with all the tools. It's a handy way to draw in using the brush tool as well. But the way that I used it on this photo was even more specific. The first filter that I added was a graduated filter and I put it so that it's affecting the sky. You can see right here that I've gone from top to bottom and we're just affecting the sky, but you might notice that it's not touching specifically the mountains. And there's a reason for that. I used something called a range mask. Now, specifically for this case, I just want it to affect the sky. So what I did is I drew in my mask, something like that. And then I went down here and I chose range mask luminance. So now I get to choose only the brightnesses that I want it to affect because the mountains are a little bit darker than what we're seeing in the sky. I can make it so it's only affecting the sky by using luminance or brightness. What I'm going to do is I'm going to affect my range and you'll see gradually that the red will go off of the mountains. We're going to go all the way up until we see it really not touching the mountains somewhere around there. And the smoothness is basically like a feather, so it'll make it a little bit softer. I like it around 50 though, I think that's pretty good. And now our range mask is set, but we're not doing anything to it yet. So now we have all of these specific controls that we can control just for the part that's selected using our graduated filter with a range mask. So I'm going to pull down my exposure a little bit. I'm gonna pull my highlights down. I'm gonna increase the whites. I'm trying to get a little bit more of the like cloud look out of the sky here. I'm gonna dehaze it a little bit. And I don't wanna overdo it with the blue, so I'm gonna pull back my saturation just a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. So before 
and after. And if I was to turn off the luminance mask, you can see that it's affected the mountains quite a bit and a lot of the areas in the sky that weren't already super bright. In my opinion, if I don't have that luminance mask on so that it's just affecting the bright areas, it's a little bit overdone. Now, I also did the same thing with a couple of brushes. So the first brush I put was on the mountains. So basically I took the brush and I drew in on the mountains and I just added a little bit of dehaze and I also warmed them up so there wasn't so much blue on the mountains. That's before that effect and after it. In this specific case, I'm not using a range mask. I just drew in the area where I wanted it. And then the other one that I did was on the water. So I basically drew in the entire water and I just added saturation because I really wanted to get the nice oranges that we have in these rocks at the bottom and then the nice blues that we had in the water. And again, I didn't use a range mask for this one specifically. I just wanted to add saturation to that entire bottom section. And so on this specific photo, those were the adjustments that I made Made beyond just my basic adjustments using the basic tab and the curves and so on and so forth. So this is what it looks like before I did those adjustments and after. Now in this photo, when I use the range mask, you might notice that I use luminance, but there's also something called color and that's where our next photo comes in. So this was my basic edit on this photo. And as you can see, there's still a whole lot of blue in it. I really like the way that the sign looks, but you can see down in this corner on all the snow, there's so much blue and up in the mountain, there's so much blue. Now I like it in the sky and I like it on the water, but I wanna take away some of the blue in some of the other areas. So again, I added some filters. I added a graduated filter from the top down and then I chose range mask color. And then what you can do is using this dropper, you can actually select the area that has the colors that you'd like it to include. So now it makes a selection based on those colors and then you can choose amount. So if I show our mask here and then I crank up the amount, it's going to get more and more of that blue color in there. I didn't wanna to get too crazy with it. So I ended up leaving it around 12. And then all I did was I desaturated the blue to taste in the sky. And then I also did pretty much the same thing for the bottom half of the photo as well. I drew a graduated filter up to the water, but not covering the water. And then I did the same kind of color range mask. I think I even chose the sky again, same spot in the sky to choose my blue color that I wanted to get rid of. And I just desaturated a little bit, but you can see still that there's some blue down here in the bottom. So what I did after that is I went in with the brush and I drew in all of the areas in the bottom and specifically on the mountain. And then I did the same thing. I used a range mask. I chose a color in the sky, that blue. I chose the amount so that it would only affect the blue part. So it's not desaturating any of the nice oranges and browns that are happening in the mountain or the greens in the trees or anything like that. It's just affecting the blue. And then I desaturated the heck out of it by about minus 70. And we get from this to that. And the reason that I wanted to do that was really to make the sky and the mountain stand against each other. So we've got nice white with the brown and the orange of this sign. Then we've got a streak of blue in the middle. Then we've got this nice gray mountain in the middle. And then we've got the blue on top. So it's kind of layered. We've got that contrast going on there. So not only can using the brush, the radial filter and the graduated filter be really powerful way to get at very specific parts of your photo photo, but also if you use those range masks, you can do so much more with it. Getting really specific to either the luminance or brightness of the parts that you want to affect or the colors that you want to affect. But as always, I wanna hear from you. What do you think of these effects? Do you have any cool ways that you can think of that we might be able to use them? Leave a comment below and on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and let's hear from our sponsor of this video. Fiverr empowers the world's creative community by connecting you to freelancers to help you build your brand. Need a new logo, website designer, copywriter? They're right there. Fiverr has the talent that you need to make it happen instantly. I'm talking about one click and you've got an order made. So click the link in the description to check out my curated store, some of the Fiverr sellers that I really like. And if there's anything that you wanna see in my Fiverr store, make sure to reach out and let me know. Thank you to Fiverr for sponsoring this video. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.